Gerlaug and Grathari. A long time ago, there lived a king with his queen and a young prince in a happy kingdom. They had not one care in the world. But all that changed when on one dark night, a dragon suddenly attacked the palace and kidnapped the young prince. The dragon flew long and hard to go to his netherworld, but was intercepted by the military commander of the Kingdom of the Mountains. The dragon flew for his life, leaving the young prince behind. The child was brought before the King of the Mountains. Who are you, young lad? Where did you come from? From far away. I am Grithari. My father is the King of Goland. Ah, that kingdom is indeed very far away. We shall send a message to him that you are safe here. Till then, stay here with us. Thank you, Your Highness. The King of the Mountains sent a number of messages to the King of Goland, but each time the dragon would intercept Ooh. them with his magic. When after ten messages, no word was heard from the King of Goland. The King of the Mountains decided to adopt the young prince for a son. That is a splendid idea, sire. The prince is a fine lad, and he will make a good future king to our land. It so happened that the commander had a daughter named Gerlau. She was a beautiful, wise young girl who knew some magic. She and Prince Githari became great friends, and with time, grew to love each other dearly. Gerlaug, shouldn't we tell our parents that we must get engaged? Think again, Grathari. You are a prince, and you must marry a princess. You know, I do not believe in that, and neither does my father. You are the only queen of my heart, and I shall marry no one else. The king of the mountains and his military commander were extremely happy with the union, and planned to have Grathari and Gerlaug engaged. But life had other plans. The dragon cast a spell on the land, and kidnapped Gerlaug and Grathari. Finally, I have you, Prince Grethari. What do you want from me? I needed the son of a king, born on the full moon of the month of the dragon, and sacrifice him to the fire to become invincible in the whole world. You were that prince, and now I shall sacrifice you in the fire and become the most powerful dragon there ever was. Free me just once, you overgrown bird, and see what I do with your sword. Oh, really? Fine. Fight me. Grithari, you will not last long in the battle, for he will fight you with magic. There, on the table, is a box of ashes. Just bring it to me as you fight, and then cut my ropes and stay near. I shall do the rest. So, as Gerlaug had instructed, Grithari brought her the box of ashes and stayed near. The dragon used his staff, and just as he was about to strike Grithari with magic, Gerlog sprinkled the ash on herself and Grithari. The dragon's dungeon disappeared, and instead they found themselves in an ocean. Both Grithari and Gerlog turned into a whale. The whale struck long and hard at the dragon, till the dragon could move no more and the fight was over. Grithari and Gerlag swam out, tired and exhausted. 
and regained their forms. What was that all about? Dragons do not like water. Dragging him into an ocean was the only way to defeat him. But where do we go from here? Where is our kingdom? Our kingdom is on the other side of the world. The only place we can go to from here is Goland, the kingdom of your father. Really? How far is it? I can get you there in an instant. But you must promise me one thing. Whatever you say, Gerlaug. No matter what happens, you shall not stop to drink water. If you do, great misfortune will befall us. And keep this with you, for these ashes have a streak of evil in them. Do not let go of this ever. If you do, you shall forget me until your bride to be throws this away. I don't understand. No matter what happens, I should not stop to drink water. If I do, great misfortune will befall us. I must not let go of this, ever. If I do, I shall forget you until my bride-to-be throws this away. What bride, Gerlaug? And how can I ever forget you? I shall marry you and you alone. These are the strange ways of magic, Grathari. Just do as I say, please. Certainly. I shall do exactly as you wish. I won't be long. I shall wait for you here. So Gerlog rubbed on some more of the ashes on Grathari, and immediately he found himself before the gates of the palace of the King of Goland. The palace is just here. I shall get there in an instant. Indeed, the gate of the palace seemed quite near. But no matter how hard Grathari walked, he just could not reach the gate. It seemed hours that he had been walking, as though he had walked miles. But he just couldn't get to the gates. The sun was hot and Prince Grathari was getting very tired and thirsty. He became so thirsty that he forgot all about his promise to Gerlaug, and the moment he heard the sound of a stream, he ran towards it. Ah, oh, without that water, I would have died. Is that you, son? Father! Yes, it's me! Oh, my dear child, we missed you so much! I missed you too, mother. You came back! Come into the palace and let there be great rejoicing for our son, the Prince of Goland, is back! There was great rejoicing in the kingdom. Since Grathari had done what Gerlog had warned him against, drinking water and losing her pendant, Grathari lost all memory of her or of the mountains. Gerlog waited for him for days, but when he did not come, she knew what might have happened. My beloved prince has forgotten me. Oh, mother of the winds, what shall I do? Life is strange and has its turns, some good, some bad, but despair not, for there is always a turn. Hearing the voice of nature, Gerlag put some of the ashes on her and reached the stream from where Prince Grathari had had water. She found her pendant there and took it. Then she went into the kingdom. She started looking for work. I come here looking for an occupation. Is there anything you need assistance with? Ah, oh, yes. 
you seem to be bright and young. We do need someone like you to look after the barn and the stables. You could do that if you do not mind. Oh, yes. Just show me what I need to do, and I shall do it to your satisfaction, I assure you. Very well, then. Come along. The forester's daughter showed Gerlog what needed to be done. And soon Gerlog was so adept at doing her work that the forester's family was delighted. Gerlog would clean the barn and the stables. She would take the cattle out to graze in the forest, keep their halters and saddles mended, and was able to make saddles of her own. Great horsemen came to get saddles made from her. And she became famous in the land. One day, as Prince Grithari was riding in the forest, and Gerlog was grazing the animals... Ah! The saddle of the horse has come loose. May I help you, Prince? Well, it looks like the saddle is broken. If you will come to where I work, I could make you a new saddle. Really? Are you the famous saddle maker of our kingdom? I do not know whether I am famous, Prince, but I do know how to make saddles. Grithari had no memory of Gerlag, and he went with her to the forester's home, where she made him a new saddle within no time. Here is your saddle, Prince. Thank you. It is perfect. How much do I pay you for this? Well, if you must pay me, just promise me that whenever you get engaged, I shall be invited to your engagement and given a seat right next to you at the banquet. Well, that is rather a queer request, but I promise you your wish will be fulfilled. Do you think a prince must marry a princess? Well, that is the custom. In fact, I am going to our neighboring kingdom tomorrow to find a bride among the seven princesses there. Thank you for the saddle. So, the next day, Grithari went to a neighboring kingdom. And as was the custom, he chose a bride who was the most beautiful of them all. The wedding was to be celebrated in Goland. The princess Grithari had picked was rather bad-natured, and he soon realized he did not like her at all. You expect me to sail in this boat? Such an ugly thing. This is not a boat. This is a ship. And how much prettier do you want it to be? If I knew you had such poor taste, I would never have agreed to marry you. <sighs> Let us just leave. The prince and the princess reached Goland, but the princess's mood did not improve. You have such a small palace. It has a thousand rooms. How many more do you want? It is ugly and small. <sighs> Soon the day of the engagement arrived. True to his promise, Grithari invited Gerlaug and made her sit right next to him at the banquet. The princess did not like this. Who is this woman sitting at our table? She is the famous saddle maker of Goland. What? You have made a saddle maker sit on our table? Behave yourself. How dare you? Looks like I am causing an upset. Maybe I should leave. No, I promised you. Just accept this gift from me, Prince. Wear this around your neck and I shall consider your promise fulfilled. Certainly. You, you should, should never, never let go, go of this pendant. If, if you do, do you, you shall forget me until your bride to be throws it away. You would wear such an ugly pendant. Gerlaug, it is you! 
Do you finally remember? Yes! Yes, I am so sorry! I did not heed your directions. What have I done? What is going on? First you invite this woman to our engagement, and you make her sit at our table, and next you wear that ugly pendant. What an insult! Well, my dear, if you consider yourself so insulted in this ugly kingdom and this ugly palace, perhaps you want to reconsider your engagement to my son. Oh, yes! I want to return to my father at this instant, and I shall call off the engagement! I am sure my son might be heartbroken, but I shall arrange to send you back to your father's kingdom in our ugly ship right away. Well, good heavens. Nobody here is going to miss her. Who is this charming maiden? The love of my life, mother. The woman who brought me back to you alive. And the prince told his parents everything about his life in the mountains. But I am no princess, your highness. Who says that a prince must only marry a princess? People must marry only for love. And I see that you love each other dearly. So, the King of Goland sent for the King of the Mountains and his Commander-in-Chief. And the wedding of Gerlaug and Grathari was celebrated with great pomp and splendor. They were never separated again. And Gerlaug and Grathari lived happily ever after.